up guys, it's Eli Fishman from TalkingBall.net and YouTube, Eli Fishman Sports, back with another interview. Tonight I'll be joined by New York Yankees legend Sparky Lyle. Sparky, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, uh, I'm glad. It took us a while, didn't it? But we're here. Thank you so much for coming on today. One of the things that you learned throughout your career that was, I'm guessing, most crucial uh, to your success was the slider, which you learned in the minors with the Red Sox, and Ted Williams taught it to you. Can you talk to me about Ted Williams teaching that to you and how it led to your success throughout your career? Well, I was, uh, I had to go to spring training with the Major League Club the first year after I signed. The Red Sox drafted me in the Rule 25. Ted Williams happened to be there in spring training. And I pitched against this college team, and I struck out 12 guys in five innings. And I'm sitting at my locker, and Ted Williams comes in, and he says, want to know where the left-hander was that pitched that day. He came over, and he said, uh, when you throw that curveball, you have your thumb up in the air, don't you? I said, yes. He says, well, the first time you threw it, I saw it. So he says, get dressed. We're going back out. He was going to show me how to throw a 12 to 6 curveball with my thumb on the ball. So the fast forward, during that session of him showing me how to throw the curveball without showing my thumb, he told me that the slider was the best pitch in baseball because it was the only pitch he couldn't hit it when he knew it was coming. And uh, what he did was he didn't really tell me how to throw it, but he told me what it did. And uh, after that, little session with Ted Williams, even though I had a pretty good 12-6 to curveball at that time, I couldn't get this slider thing out of my head, so I used to lay in bed at night trying to figure out how I had to throw this ball with, uh, you know, to get it to do what he said. And uh, I, about the middle of the year, I was in double A, and it came to me, I went outside at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm throwing against this building and this slider's going down 6 to 8 inches, and the rest is history. You were traded to the Yankees for Danny Cater, and then in 1972, that was your first year with the New York Yankees, and you were absolutely amazing. You emerged as one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. You had a 1.91 ERA in 59 games. What made everything come together with the Yankees and be so perfect that what did you do so well that year? Well, I think one of the things, you know, when I was with the Red Sox, I, when I came up, I was behind John Wyatt, and uh, there was a couple other guys I can't even think of their name right now, but I was probably three or four on the pecking order there. I hadn't really established myself yet, and uh, with the Red Sox is when I started throwing the slider every single pitch. And I, they, they still wanted me to kind of throw different pitches and things like that. It wasn't that I didn't want to do that, but I had so much success with the slider that I figured, you know, why should I throw anything else here? So when I got traded with, uh, to the Yankees, Ralph Houck, who was the manager, asked me how I wanted to pitch, that I was going to be the closer there. And uh, I said, I could throw every day because my arm doesn't get stiff or sore, and that uh, I'm going to throw this pitch every time. And he said, okay. He said, well, we'll give it a go. And uh, I just had a tremendous year that year. And I mean, Thurman and I never had any signs or anything like that. He just kind of waved, well, okay, let's go. And that was, that was pretty much it. But uh, we, we, we only missed the playoffs, I think, by one game that year, which was that was kind of the rise back for the Yankees. They had been uh, not very good in the last seven, eight, nine years, whatever, before that. So I think that's when uh, the good part about me having that year was, I think that was the beginning of the Yankees coming back to prominence again. Um, you, in 1977 is your historic year, Cy Young Award, that famous New York Yankees World Series. Can you talk to me about that entire year and being named the best pitcher in all of the American League? How great of an honor was that? Well, that was, that was really a great honor. I, I, did, I didn't think I would actually win it. I came in second in 72 when I had the really good year. They just didn't give awards like that to relief pitchers back then. And, uh, in fact, I think they just started uh, inviting relief pitchers to uh, all-star games. They used to just take 10 or 12 starters. No relief pitchers were ever really invited to all-star games. So a couple things happened there, but uh, I think 
you know, even though 77 was a great year, it was the 76 year that I actually launched that team. You know, uh, we got in the World Series, Chambliss hits the home run, the bottom of the ninth. Cincinnati goes through us like we weren't there. <laughs> And so we were, we were on a mission in 77. Every, everybody on that team, we, we wanted to make sure we got back to the World Series because we, uh, we wanted to play the big red machine again. And it turned out that we got back, but the red machine kind of got old, I, I guess then. But uh, that, that was a great year. And, and to uh, participate in a World Series like that, especially uh, you know wearing the pinstripes, Something that's life changing. Uh, that 77 season, one of the most historic teams in not just Yankees history, but in all of right. baseball history. I remember in a baseball book I have, it has the top 10 lineups of all time. Yeah. And that 1977 World Series team, you guys basically ruled baseball, one of the top lineups in all of baseball history. Talk to me about that team, that clubhouse chemistry, and making it all the way, win the World Series. Well, it's, it, you know, something like that is. I, I can't say, I, I know we had good chemistry, but you know, there was a lot of chaos in the clubhouse, as we all know, and uh, things like that. But the bottom line was, come game time, all that went out the window. Nobody was mad at each other. And, you know, we didn't really have that many clicks, you know, where guys separated. The, the, the team basically, anybody that was hanging out, we were basically hanging out together, even though we maybe sitting at different tables or whatever the case may be. But uh, I think it was just a thing, like I said, that we were on a mission uh, to get back to the World Series, bring the Yankees back to prominence. And, and getting traded to the Yankees actually, and I believe this still today, that it, it made me a better pitcher, a better player. Because the, the wins and losses when you have those pinstripes on, have somehow become more important than they do any at any of the time. Um, so you, after your career, you managed for the Somerset Patriots, the first manager in the team's history, just retired a few years ago. You're the manager emeritus, and you're you're actually the complete face of this franchise. I mean, literally, your face is on the outside of the building, and there's a mascot named after you and everything. You're the, you're the face of the team. Can you talk to me about this Patriots organization and what they mean to you? Well, it's uh, it, it, it was just a beautiful thing that happened to me. It, it, it kind of changed my life around also. You know, to have two uh, life-changing things happen to you is, is very rare. But, uh, you know, I, I think everybody knows the story. I went to buy a truck off of Steve Caliper at the Ford dealership. And uh, it turns out that uh, I had to order the truck. They didn't have one. I went up there for a specific thing. And in the meantime, uh, Mr. Caliper had bought a franchise in the Atlantic Lake. So when the truck came in, he asked me to be the manager. I had never thought of managing or anything. I, I, I mean, when I actually walked away from baseball in 82 after the 82 season, I was just going off my merry way. You know, I had no intentions of, uh, of being a coach or a manager or anything like that, mainly because back then, if you wanted to be a pitching coach or a manager, you had to go to A-ball, work, start working your way up, just like you did in the minor leagues, I wasn't about to even do anything like that. It was too time consuming for me. So he he gave me the opportunity for the Somerset Patriots, and, and I enjoyed this so much because, and another thing why I actually took the job was, it was a place for these guys to, to play when they really shouldn't have been out of baseball. You know, and that's, that was the whole premise behind the Atlantic League anyhow was, you know, I think they found out there was something like 300 and some players. I don't know if that's a correct number, but something like that. Every year they get released, they have nowhere to go, so they just go home. And as you do, you've been around long enough here, that you, you see the caliber of baseball we're playing here. It's, it's just ridiculous to have these guys just end their careers and, and go home. 
and this league has been so successful and we put so many people back to the organizations and that's a bittersweet when that happens. I think this year, right now, uh, a, a couple, uh, Ray Brown keeps track of how many players are going through the turnstiles all year. I think we're up to 49 or 50 players already this year. And uh, so it, it, it was a great experience for me. These guys play their hearts out for you. They, they don't make that much money, and a lot of them have families, but they play some good baseball. And it, was, it was a great experience for me, and I, I love the Somerset Patriots and what they stand for. And, and we did, uh, I, I, I think we did things our way, if that's a, appropriate, but uh, you know, we didn't really, we, did, we always uh, did what we thought was best for the team. And I always felt that if you do what's best for the team, you, you can't ever make a mistake. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Sparky.